<laughs> Say hello to the camera. Hello, motherfucker. <laughs>
In the year 2306 of the Isu era, the sun unleashed its fury on my once great civilization. I perfected the work of Consus and made it my own. I salvaged Aita's brilliant essence and inserted it into the DNA of your rebellious kind. I sent him into the unknown future to be reborn again and again. I returned to the Grand Temple. I shed my physical form and entered the Grey. But stubborn Minerva and foolish Jupiter discovered me and sealed me inside. Entombed, I waited for the day when your technology might allow my return. That wait is nearly over. What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come now, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law. Lava. Pardon me, gentlemen. Sergeant Freddie Aberline of Scotland Yard. Where might this scandalous activity be taking place? Oh, yes, yes. It's uh, uh, just this way. Follow me, Sergeant, but discreetly, if you would. One doesn't like to be seen airing a fellow member of Parliament's dirty linen, what? <laughs> I'll be very discreet. Usually I would be in disguise, but my clothes all fell into the Thames.
There would be so much running involved in this job. Where the hell is that? Oh, Let's get him out of here! Oh, just united in opposition against this perfidious war. Surely such upstanding sentinels of the tenure are not waiting for the end of their duties. I beg your pardon. No password, no passage. Do you know who I am? I'm a member of Parliament, you critic! Shame! No password, no passage, sir. Where would we have been in Balaclava? If we had turned our coats at the first sign of difficulty, blind against the wall, and shocked! I wonder if you were the of the imagination. Deservedly so. Christ, not Balaclava again. I am sorry, my lord. The wind blew. Password. Balaclava. Come in. Ah, Minister Hacker. One moment. Now then, <clears throat> let's discuss this like je Good God! Who the bloody hell? Oh, shut up. should fall not on the gloried fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen and the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick.
you okay? Apart from the death squad on our tail, apart from that. Backup's on the way. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? It's not your job to fight Templars. I had this colleague. He was our boss's son. I didn't much care for him at the start. Everyone treated him like he was so bloody special. To me, he just wasn't invested in, in, in anything that didn't affect him personally. But I was wrong about him. He became my friend, put himself through hell, and he saved us all in the end. So I reckon, well, I can't apologize to him, but I can, I don't know, I can try and live up to his example. You are a good assassin. Holy jeez! Hello. It has been too long. Galena! I mean, I have not seen you since we blew up that lab in Paris. Oh, there were many explosions and you screamed like a baby. Bishop tells me Otzoberg is here. I will kill him for you. Super. Great news. Now, if you wouldn't mind keeping watch, I am going to lie down and die now. Rest. We have a big fight coming. Sean and Rebecca are safe for now, but we're still relying on you to find us that shroud. Mignonette, your qualities surpass your charms. I'm not entirely sure that's meant as a compliment. Love in a mist. That's a pretty name. Alternatively called Devil in a Bush. <laughs> Narcissus. Self-love. I should buy a bouquet for Jacob. <laughs> Most unkind, Miss Fry. As amusing as all this is, I really should be getting back to work. If you need me... I'll send a bouquet. Of irises? A message. Indeed. The unspeakable has happened. A policeman arrested Mr. Darwin and carried him away as if he were nothing but a common criminal. That policeman... He is corrupt to the bones, I'm sure of it. Oh, I do so fear for Mr. Darwin's safety. Miss Nightingale, do you know where they might have gone? Uh, the policeman, he did mention a funeral. I believe I know where it is. Follow me. Poor Mr. Darwin has been through so much recently. Those people are trying to discredit a lifetime of work. It's disgraceful. And I fear Mr. Darwin is no longer the fit young man who once traveled the world. Here we are. The obsequies are taking place here. Better hurry now. You can find me here afterwards. Go on. I don't want to hurt you. Oi, what are you doing? Walk. Is this honestly what it feels like when I arrest someone? What do you want from me? I need you to be honest with a friend of mine. Oh, you're a brash one, aren't you? Desperate times call for desperate measures. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Everyone with any power is against us. We'll never get on. Don't we ladies, people. Politics? You're right. There's a very good reason indeed.
is the culprit. I was just carrying out my orders. Arresting an old man and dragging him off to Lord knows where is fine work indeed for a policeman. Now, sir, tell us where you have taken Mr. Darwin. A man paid me to bring him to his secret base. How terrible. We will need transportation. I'm half a mind to take you over and feed you to me dogs. And I hope it bleed now. He's very weak. We shouldn't move Mr. Darwin until I have seen to his wounds. They're here! Attack! You won't be stirring up no more trouble. Please look after him, Miss Nightingale. My brother and I will visit soon. Well, look who's here. We were very worried about you, sir. You're looking spry for a fossil, sir? A man's friends are the best measure of his worth. I'm proud to count you among mine. The dangers pass us. No need to leave, sir. What Mr. Darwin needs now is rest. To that end, he's joining his family on the Isle of Wight. Rest, indeed. I shall start work on my next book. I must insist that you recuperate quietly, sir. The acquisition of knowledge is in itself sufficiently recuperative. Go, tell her. This is one fight I aim to avoid, sir. Thank you for everything, my friends. Ideas, like people, can only thrive when they are free. We believe one of the spies is posing as a nurse in the nearby facilities. She has been taking blood samples into odd-looking cubes and delivering them to an unknown accomplice. Perhaps you will be able to spot them during one of these illicit rendezvous. Good luck. Help! 
This way to the Alhambra! For the love of Christ! Wrath. I will escort the next group into the theatre shortly. Oh, At this lucky I'm trying to keep out of trouble. Next day behind us. Everyone ready? Then let's proceed. I'll be serving you this evening, gentlemen. What's still there, love? Last time, I swear, you nearly poisoned us. Scene two, stand by! That's a daisy. Tom Watchley. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed your evening so far, ladies and gentlemen. I know I have. Now, before our final act, I would like to toast all you brave people who joined us tonight to celebrate life and death. Go on! Toast them! Your move, Jacob, my dear! Burn! 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 Why did you do it? All of it? What? Snap a baby crow's neck between my thumb and forefinger. Slice to bits the ones you deem innocent. Keep the world in its divine, manic state. For the same reason, I do anything. Why not?
Surprise, motherfuckers! You were, Mr. Starrick. <laughs> you were.